Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a medieval movie title slide using a grungy background and a stone text effect in Photoshop. Let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to need is a subtle black and white texture for our background. The one that we're using is available in the project files. So the first thing that we want to do is come down here and create a new solid color fill layer. And we want that color to use the hex code BCAB. 8.5 and hit OK. And then I'm just going to change the opacity for that layer to 35%. Next I'm going to come create a curves adjustment layer. And I'm going to drag the middle of this curve down and to the right a bit to darken my image. And then in my layer mask for my curves adjustment, I'm going to use a soft black brush and I'm going to paint in that layer mask so the curve adjustment only affects the outer edges of my image. And that's just going to give us a nice subtle vignette, which you can see if I turn this on and off. Next, I'm going to come over to my rectangle tool, and I want to make sure that I have shape selected up here. And I'm going to click on my document, and I'm going to make this 1920 by 30 pixels. And then I'm going to drag it into place at the top of my image. If you double click the thumbnail for that rectangle in the layers palette, it opens up the color picker. So we're going to give it a color of 624141, and I'm going to hold shift and press the down arrow once, and that's going to move it 10 pixels from the top of our canvas. Then I'm just going to come down and change the blend mode from normal to color burn. I'm going to select that layer and press Control J to duplicate it, and I'm going to move that into place here. And then I'm going to click any of these handles and change the height of that rectangle from 30 pixels to 10 pixels. And I'm going to change the color for that rectangle to 5B6241 and hit OK. And I want to snap this one into place and then move it down 5 pixels. So I'm just going to hit the arrow key down 5 pixels. So I'm going to hold shift and select both of those rectangles in the layers palette. And I'm going to right click them and duplicate those layers. And then what I'm going to do is click on this handle to open the free transform tools and hover just outside of that and rotate those rectangles while holding shift 180 degrees and hit enter. Then I'm going to drag those down to the bottom of my document and again hold shift and press the up arrow to move them 10 pixels from the bottom. Next I want to find the center of my document so with none of my layers selected I'm going to drag from my rulers out into the middle until I see it snap into place. And you can see that it says 960 pixels and since our document is 1920 pixels, I know that that's the center. Then I'm going to do the same thing from the top. If your rulers aren't showing, all you have to do is press Ctrl R to hide and show them. Next, I'm going to click and hold on my rectangle tool and change it to the ellipse tool. And I'm going to click on my document and create a circle that's 670 pixels. And then I'm going to move that into place in the middle of my canvas. Next, I want to use the same green color as we did on our stripes, so I'm going to double click that shape and change that color to 5B6241. And again, I'm going to change the blend mode to color burn. For this layer, I'm going to change the fill to 50% in the layers palette. Next, I'm going to double click that layer to open the layer style dialog, so I want to add a little inner glow to that circle. So I'm going to turn on the inner glow, and you want the blend mode set to color burn the opacity set to 35%, the size set to 75 pixels, and the range to 50%, and hit OK. So I'll just click this arrow to minimize those effects, and again I'm going to press Ctrl J to duplicate that layer, and click one of these handles, and up here I'm going to click this link button so it resizes horizontally and vertically in the same ratio, and I'm going to change this duplicate circle to 580 pixels, and hit enter twice. So now we have a couple overlapping circles, and since they're set to 50% opacity and color burn, they interact with each other. Now the next thing that you'll need is the silhouette of a sword. You can draw your own or find one online, or you can use the one that's included in the project files. So I'm going to open up my project files and double click the sword silhouette PSD file to open it in Photoshop. Then I'm going to click and drag to undock that document from the top, and I'm simply going to click and drag and before you release, you want to hold down shift and then release the mouse button, and that will snap your sword directly in the center of your document. Now I can close this sword silhouette, 
and keep working in my main document. I want to set the color of the sword to the same red that we used for the top and the bottom stripes. So I'm going to double click that, and again set the color to 624141. And again, change the blend mode from normal to color burn. Now that we have our background all set up, it's time to create the text. So the first thing that I want to create is the ampersand, or the and sign that's going to go in the middle of our document. So I'm going to come over and choose the text tool, and click on my document. And then I'm going to create an ampersand and resize that to fit my document better. And move it into place. Now the font that we're going to be using is called Black Letter Extra Bold. And I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. So once you have it centered in your document, you can press Control semicolon to hide your guides. So before we add some layer styles, we need to create a pattern that we can use within those layer styles to give our text some depth. So I'm going to hide all of my layers here until only my background is showing. And I'm going to come up and click Edit, Define Pattern, and hit OK. And now our pattern will be available for use within our Layer Styles dialog. So I'll turn all my layers back on. And I'm going to double click the ampersand to open the Layer Styles dialog. So the first thing that we want to do is turn on the Pattern Overlay. And in our Pattern dropdown, you'll see that we have our texture here. Next, I'm going to give it some color, so I'm going to turn on the color overlay and select the color using the hex code 777165. And I'm going to set the blend mode for that color overlay to linear burn. Next, I'll turn on the bevel and emboss, and I want to change the technique from smooth to chisel hard, the size all the way up to 250 pixels. And you want to have use global light checked, so any shading angles that you set here will also be used in other effects. So I'm going to change the angle to 135 degrees and the altitude to 50 degrees. Then I'll change the highlight mode to linear dodge and 70% and the shadow mode to linear burn at 35%. Next I'll come down and turn on the texture under my bevel and emboss and I want to select the same background pattern that we used in our pattern overlay. Then all I'm going to do is change the depth to negative 2, and that's going to give us a 3D look. Now you can kind of see a horizontal seam here, so what I'm going to do is click Snap to Origin under Texture, and I'm also going to come down to the Pattern Overlay and click Snap to Origin, and that will align my texture and pattern overlay so there's no seams in my text. Next I'm going to turn on the Inner Glow, and we're going to use it to add some color to the edges of our ampersand. So you want this blend mode set to color burn and the opacity to 25%, and we're going to use a red color. And the hex code for that is 4D0000. Then I'm going to set the choke to 15% and the size to 23%. I'm going to use the inner shadow effect, but instead of using it for a shadow, I'm going to use it to add a highlight to the top left edge of my text. So I'm going to change the color to white and the blend mode to linear dodge. Then I'm going to set the opacity to 25%, the distance to 3 pixels, and the size to 8 pixels. Lastly, I'm going to give it a drop shadow. So I want that set to linear burn at 35%, and then I'll set the distance to 14 pixels and the size to 9 pixels. And if you want, you can change the noise up to about 5 or 10, and that'll give us a nice gritty texture in our shadow. And that's it for the layer style, so I'm going to hit OK. So I'll minimize that in the Layers palette. And now I'll create some text to the left of that and type the word Kings. So I'll resize this text up a bit. And the font that we're going to be using is called Charlemagne. Now if you don't have Charlemagne, you could also use something like Trajan or any other regal looking serif typeface you can find online. So I'll scale that down just a little bit and move it into place. And I'm going to reopen the effects on my ampersand layer, and I'm going to hold Alt and click and drag the word effects from the ampersand layer to the kings layer, and that will copy all of the effects to my new layer. Next, I'm going to right click any of the effects under that kings layer and choose scale effects, and I'm going to set the scale to 65% and hit OK. And that's going to scale down all of the numbers in each of these effects, so it will fit my smaller text better. But there are a couple changes that I want to make. So I'm going to click Bevel and Emboss to open the Layer Style dialog for my King's text. And under Texture, you'll notice that the scale of the texture got changed to 65%. I want to set that back up to 100%. And 
And also back under my pattern overlay, I want to resize the scale back up to 100% as well. Lastly, I want to go to the drop shadow and change the distance back to 14 and the size back to 9. Then I'll hit OK. Now I'm going to hit Ctrl J to duplicate my King's layer and move that to the right of my ampersand. And then I'll use my text tool to just update that text to say rings. And that's pretty much it. This is a useful file because you can now easily change the background, the colors, and the fonts to match almost any color combination while still retaining that old medieval look. I'm John Shaver for Design Panoply. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.